Sure enough, it was on uh, the regular focus and not macro because I was like, why can't I see anything? So there are the points. And uh, I'm going to try to show you what happens. I'm going to crank the engine with, the, with this here. Mm -hmm. And what's happening mm -hmm. is those, that little, this thing right here is moving up and down. That's what happens. So there's your condenser. That helps generate the spark, and this is what helps release it and uh, bring the uh, spark to the other two cylinders. So I got the feeler gauge here. The manual tells me between 0.016 and 0.020. So what I've done is I've, I've put in for 0.18. And what I do here is I'm going to stick that feeler gauge in there. You can see the feeler gauge. See the feeler gauge kind of goes right in there. See that? It's a little snug. There's a little friction there. You can see a little bit of that scrapage. So that's what's happening there with that. I'm going to try to do this while I'm holding the camera. I got this thing, feeler gauge there, set there. I don't know if it's going to stay. But I'm going to crank the engine. And you can see what happens. You can see the feeler gauge moving. There it goes. Back and forth. Back and forth. And, that, and that's obviously tighter there. That's a tighter gap there, so it's not open. So I'm going to crank it until that filler gauge goes okay, right about there. That's where about where the feeler gauge kind of drop, kind of drop down. I'm going to pull back where the feeler gauge kind of dropped down like it was slack, and it started to stiffen back up again. So right there, um, I can adjust the gap and make sure that it's you know that this. This is definitely not snug right now. This is loose. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to tighten up the gap using my handy dandy Allen key. And so I'm going to leave the gauge in there. And let's see if I can do this in uh, one fell swoop here. I got to get the feeler gauge over out of the way. I got to get my Sorry there's no uh, lighting on this thing here, but so I've got that, the key is down in the little adjustment thing there, and I'm going to try to tighten this thing up. Hopefully I'm tightening it. Yeah, I'm definitely tightening it. And I want it so it's, so it's snug. Um, I probably should loosen it up a little bit because honestly it should be going to go back a little bit. I don't want it loose in there, but I also don't want it where I have to flick the points up in order to get, get this thing into place. So probably a little bit right about there. It's getting looser. I'm going to try to snug that back up like that, just so I can slip that gauge in and out of there without a problem. Yep, so I can slip the gauge in and out of there without too much of an issue. I don't have to force it. So that's about there. So so I'm going to figure that's how the where the points need to be adjusted. Last night I was here with the Allen key going back and forth, back and forth, trying to get the adjustment just right. The only thing I don't, I still have an issue with is with the choke. Obviously, it's a manual choke on it now. And um, I found that I've had to actually uh, hold on to the throttle rod when I start her up so she isn't at full throttle. Um, she doesn't need to be at full throttle. She told me she's still a little bit rich. But in any case, um, don't know if I showed this before, but I'm going to show it again just for you know public service announcement. Uh, this is a week later, and that is my hand from touching the exhaust manifold. Now, it, granted, it was because it was running super rich, so there was a lot of fuel burning in that uh, part of the exhaust manifold. Now, uh, the issue I've got is one side it runs still pretty hot. This one runs. You can touch it like this, but you don't want to like put your hand on it for long. That sucker was so hot, it was literally a split second. And I 
touched it with with the meat of my thumb there and burn myself so word to the wise be safe uh, wear gloves probably that would have helped a little bit for me so I'm going to put the um, cover for the points back on there and uh, get the spark plugs back in that I've cleaned off now and I'm going to try to start this up well she started right up I literally put the plugs in uh, he obviously took the ratchet out of there. It took me a little bit to get it out. Um, I uh, put the plug back in, put the plug wires back on, put the cover of the... Uh, this time it, uh oh Now it's surging a little bit. There's a little bit of that surging going on. Uh, I've got a couple things running inside the RV the refrigerator. I need to get that, to hear that surging. Sounds like it's starting to even out a little bit. right there. Uh, I had a little uh, freezing water issue. Swelled up my uh, water tank. So I think I might be doing a swap on that soon. What I bought, what I bought was this. Now it's a um, one element breather, open element breather here. But what I'm hoping to do is this is a rubber, kind of a hard rubber bottom. I'm hoping to cut this out of the bottom and stick that right on top of the carburetor. So, so um, yeah, that's what I'm looking to do here. So what I'm looking to do, obviously, is put that on top of that like that and replace the air cleaner. running a little rough. I'm betting that my uh, idle, I messed with my idle valve a little bit. I'm going to see if I can adjust that. Screwdriver. Back this off a little bit. It's 
hasn't gotten to idle yet. See what it does? See what it does? Opening it up, I'm going left, so I'm opening this valve up a little bit. Did it a quarter turn. And you can see here, there's no more smoke coming out of the exhaust. Or, you know, that you can see. <laughs> I guess I should say. No black, no white, no blue. Which is good. Probably wouldn't have white on this because it's air cooled. Usually that's no water. Uh, blue oil and black is, you know, way too much fuel and carbon. So, uh, so yeah. So I'm going to let that run probably another 20 minutes. Uh, see if it does that hunting thing again. And we have to troubleshoot that and get that so it doesn't keep surging like that, but that's a fairly common issue. You can see other videos for solutions to that, so I'm going to go back on there. Probably going to pull that air cleaner portion off there and uh, run it with this uh, breather with it being adapted to it. So, thanks for being patient. There's been a lot of videos on this, on this RV generator. I uh, hope some of the some of the things you saw here were helpful to you and your troubleshooting. Take care and happy RV.